Rockets are just so freaking cool. Metaphorically speaking. In reality, they are pretty hot. How hot do you ask? Well, a few videos ago I built a rocket with a ceramic nozzle that could withstand thousands of degrees, and that nozzle melted. So yeah, pretty damn hot. And that's my problem really. I can't really test different geometries for the nozzles, because they get obliterated before I have a chance to assess their performance. For that reason, I decided to make the cool rocket even cooler. Lately I've been fascinated by these little cartridges. They are just metal containers with high pressure CO2 in them. In fact, the CO2 is so compressed that it's no longer in the gaseous form, but instead the molecules get crushed together into a solid, and that solid is commonly known as dry ice. I have used these little monsters in the past before, and they are pretty powerful, but I never really unleashed their full power as a proper rocket. My goal for this video is getting a testing stand where I can test weird nozzles in a controllable manner, but for it to be controllable, I'm going to need a remotely controlled valve. Luckily I have one from my last video, where things didn't go so well. So, I have the setup with a manual and the electro valve here. I'm gonna test some cartridges to see if it's still working. This, let's see what happens. Goggles on. Look at this, it's frosted, it's ice. Isn't that cool? It's because of the, the rapid decompression of the gas. It pulls off heat from, the, from the, the cartridge itself. Ouch. I had a way to open the valve, but for me to properly test it, I needed to stick it onto something that can slide. For that effect, I needed a linear guide. And I once again used the linear guide that I stole from one of my 3D printers. And I 3D printed a beautiful red support in PLA that worked pretty well. Listen to this clicking sound. I love it. With a basic setup in place, I give it a vertical test and for my great surprise... Nothing happened. So I put a bigger cartridge in and this time... It kinda moved. I mean, it's not the most exciting thing ever. I guess that's why you need nozzles on rockets. So the obvious next step was getting some nozzles. I designed the modular system where I had a chamber with a support to attach many different nozzles. I 3D printed all of the parts in resin and gave them a good rinse in alcohol. The parts were printed with a lot of support material. And you know what that means. Support removal ASMR. After I was done with that I assembled the setup on the valve with some glue and screws and I gave it a test. The first nozzle I tested was just a 4mm circular hole and nothing really happened. I went a little smaller just like Benjamin Button with a 2mm hole and lo and behold, nothing happened. After two back-to-back -back failures that made me wonder if I deserve an engineering degree, I actually thought about what I was doing and I realized I don't really need a chamber because there's no combustion going on. It's just wasting pressure. I got rid of the chamber and printed just a nozzle with a 2mm hole and that worked much better. Still, not the most exciting thing on the planet. I kind of get it though, the valve setup weighs about 270 grams, which is a lot for a small rocket like this. But just like my grandfather used to say, If you want to make things interesting, lay them down. <laughs> if you know what I mean. I didn't get it. I was 13. Which is weird because that's the exact number of kids my grandfather has. I followed my grandfather's advice and turned everything into an horizontal setup. And let's go. Oh my god! <laughs> that's beautiful. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of power. As you can see, my grandfather was right. But you can also see that the nozzle is not super efficient. The exhaust coming out is expanding a lot and what that means is that there's still a lot of pressure there that is not being used. The exhaust is also going all over the place in terms of direction. We don't really want that. We want it to be as straight as Johnny Bravo. Can you guys get that reference? I'm getting old. At this point this became a competition to see which nozzle would perform the best. 
I designed a bunch of nozzles with a restriction equivalent to a 1.5mm hole. First on the list was the Laval nozzle with a 6mm expansion cup. As you can see the exhaust is much more straight and we no longer see the after nozzle expansion. In the vertical test the rocket lifted itself about 1cm above level 0. Now a simple question. Is this the best we can do? When talking about rockets what really matters is the amount of acceleration they produce and how fast they go. Right? To actually measure all this data, so I can compare the performance of the rocket, I used a free software called Tracker that I saw Destin from Smarter Every Day using on a video, where it tracks a grasshopper jumping into the air. I plugged my slow motion footage into the software, and I got this beautiful graph. Let's keep going, shall we? Next, I tested the Dulaval nozzle with a 3mm expansion cup. In this test, the exhaust seems to be messier, and I would have expected it to have a worse performance, but that's why in the realm of science, it's better to deal with numbers and not with the appearances. On the vertical test, the rocket lifted itself 6.5 cm above level 0, which tells me that the last one was underperforming tremendously. On the next test, I changed the design of the nozzle altogether and went with a sexy looking aerospike nozzle. The aerospike nozzle seemed to perform decently and generated a beautiful exhaust, but unfortunately only took the second place in terms of lift, with 1.5 cm. Which is not bad, but also not good enough. We are looking for a winner here. The next challenger was a creation of my own, an aerospike nozzle with a spiral-shaped spike. This doesn't really have a scientific basis, it's just something that I thought it would be cool to test. And cool it was. The exhaust looks pretty awesome and the nozzle didn't perform that badly on the horizontal test. But on the vertical test, this weird looking nozzle took the last place with only 8mm of lift. I can't really believe I just tested 5 different rocket nozzles and nothing blew up. I mean, there was this once that I forgot to discharge a cartridge and it went ballistic through my workshop, destroying my IKEA panel. But that is fine, right? These are the final results. As you can see, the winner was the Dulaval nozzle with a 3mm expansion cup, with a constant acceleration of 37 meters per second squared. That's four times the acceleration of gravity. Of course, in the end, this was not about getting a winner, but instead getting a practical sense of how nozzles perform. I could have used simulations, but that's no fun. This test bench will be a valuable tool for me to test nozzles for my future rockets. If you also want to test these nozzles, well, you can find the 3D models in the description below. If you for some reason don't have a 3D printer, well, you're about to get a chance to win one. On my last video I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Warzone Beast, and she suggested that I could build a multi-stage rocket. Sounds like a plan. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Well, it seems like the end of the video has arrived. Um, thank you so much for watching and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!